Hey class, so in this video we are going to continue going from ZBrush straight to Substance Painter. So we UV'd in the last video and now we're going to use the Decimation Master Z plugin to reduce the size of our meshes so that Substance Painter can handle it. So either we're going to use a preset with a set number of points for each of our subtools or we're going to use a method called preprocess current and decimate current to create a percentage of our original points. Then we're gonna merge all of our separate subtools into one layer, or if our model has many materials, we're going to merge into several layers um, that will become texture sets in Substance Painter. Then we're going to export our FBX uh, for Substance Painter. Okay, so we're back and we have our model nicely UV'd. Right now in our subtool menu, um, we have a ton of different layers, but each of them has been UV'd, so that's great. The next thing we wanna do is decimate our model. So right now our model is 9 million points, which seems pretty darn excessive. Um, so what I'm gonna need to do is reduce that number significantly in order to bring it into Substance Painter. Um, because we're going directly from ZBrush to Substance Painter, we need to reduce it more than if I was bringing it into, say, Maya. Um, you're really gonna have trouble if your model is over, I would say, five or 600,000 points, at least for my computer. So let's get to that. The easiest way is to go to your Z plugin menu. So back to Z plugin, grab that little power button, drag it over. And there's a tool called Decimation Master. Now with Decimation Master, it's basically going to turn our layer into triangles. It's going to try to keep as many details as possible while um, reducing the amount of points as much as possible. So in Decimation Master here, the big thing that we want to do since we did all that work on our UVs is keep UVs. If you have poly paint, um, keep using keep poly paint here. And then we have a bunch of options for our um, processing. So one, you can you do a percentage of your current UVs or your current points. And that percentage um, requires you to pre-process and then to decimate. So if you want to use a percentage, it's gonna take two steps, first pre-processing and then hitting decimate. If you want to just use a preset, you just click on the preset and it will do everything for you. Now we wanna be really smart about this. Um, I don't want any additional points if I don't have to. So I really wanna pay attention for each layer about my active points and my total points. So clearly there's some layers in here that have way too many points and I really need to decimate them down. Um, but some layers like this details that only has 688 points, I might as well keep it. So. Let's be smart. And the other thing, unfortunately, this active points goes missing when I move my cursor. So I'm just gonna go and adjust my interface or configuration, enable customize. I'm gonna do control alt and I'm just gonna move these buttons over. That should give me some space. Let's move these active points down and my total points down. Now I gotta say I am very lucky because I have a very big screen, but um, moving points, uh, moving your buttons around really does help. And I'm not gonna store this because I don't wanna keep this. So again, for this details high, I don't think I need to change it. It's only 688 active points. So let's go to our next layer. Oh, and before we do anything, let's do a save as. And you really wanna do a save as right now. 
because everything will be decimated and you're not going to have like additional layers. So please take the time, do a save as, please. Okay, so straps, high. So these have 1.39 million. That seems a lot for some straps. Um, so I'm thinking 75K. And let's see, let's really take a look and see if we lose any detail. I really don't think we're going to. I didn't do enough detail in order to lose anything. But this will be our first decimated piece. And I want you to see the difference between the before and after in the polyframe. So you can see now what Decimation Master does is just create a triangle around everything to keep the detail in. Okay, so I actually pressed 35K. I still think this looks great. We have half the points. We're getting these active points down. For the eyes, I have two subdivision levels, so 2,500 or 10,000 is my higher subdivision level. Um, I think the higher subdivision level actually looks a lot better than the lower one, so I'm going to keep that and delete the lower. Okay, uh, let's go to our backpack base. This has 1.859 million. Now I know it doesn't need that much. Um, we don't need these divisions in the polygroup, so I'm going to press Control and W to unify this into one. Um, I also, let's see, if we go down to our lowest subdivision level, what's that get us? 456 points. That's not bad. Let's see if there's a subdivision level that actually looks good. No, we need to go all the way up. Okay, so for this, we are going to use our Decimation Master. Make sure to keep UVs is on. I'm going to say Let's try 35K. So it has detail, but it doesn't have that much detail. And it's quite the process, but the more processing you do now to make your model smaller, the easier it will be for Substance Painter. Okay, let's take a look. Looks pretty terrifying, but you can see um, the little nooks and crannies that I made. Those are... Um, have a little more detail in them and I think this actually works no problem so that's 35,000 points great for the stitches these actually only have a thousand active points um, so that's not bad at all I actually would probably divide them once so they have about 6,500. I'm going to delete lower. Okay, let's go to the trim. Remember the trim when I was um, UVing, I just ended up zero meshing it, and it does have 40,000 active points. I think I could decimate that. So let's try to get it to 20,000 points. And you can see by pressing this presets button, it's pre-processing and decimating. I end up trying a custom points of 10,000 and that actually works pretty well for this as well. Okay, uh, next the nose. So the nose, the only real detail is that slash that we have. For the nose, I thought about doing the pre-process current decimate current, but ended up just using a flat 20K and that was fine. Same thing with the tummy, I did a flat 10K. And I wanna show you one more where I do the pre-process current decimate current option. These are the clasps, and I actually think they're fine just as they are. So let's leave them. Now for our last piece, we're going to work on this owl top high. And you can see it has a lot of detail on it. Let me change our shader so you can see it a little better. And so this is the kind of situation where I'm going to try the pre-process current and then the decimate current. So let's hit all you have to do. Make sure keep UVs is still on pre-process current, process current. 
And once that's done with the status bar up here, I'm ready to decimate current. And so I'm going for 20% of the current um, number of polygons. And since the pre-processing took the bulk of the time, um, now we can take a look. So that looks pretty great detail-wise, but it, it does still have um, a ton of points, a million, over a million points on this particular top. But that's how you would do that if you were going to use the pre-process current and the decimate current. You can also set this to a number percentage. Um, I'm going to try this one more time just at 75k and see what it looks like if it keeps it. And that looks exactly the same as the pre-process and the decimate. Um, now you will also notice that you could pre-process all, that means all of your subtools, and decimate all, all of your subtools. Um, but I wouldn't do that just because sometimes you won't know whether uh, ZBrush is crashed or not. So um, definitely a good idea to do each layer one at a time. All right, so now we're all done with this part and we can move on to the merging. So we have two options for merging. First, I'm going to show you how to merge all visible layers. And this is a great option if you have maybe four or fewer polygroups or four of or fewer um, materials in your model. If you have a lot more than that, we're going to want to merge to just two or three separate layers. And um, I'll show you that in a minute. Now the next thing we want to do is we're going to merge all of our layers. So we're going to merge visible and you have to make sure you turn on UV. What's nice about using merge visible versus merge down is that it's going to create your new merged model as a completely new Z tool up in this top Z tool menu. So let's do that. Merge visible. Make sure UV's on. Click. And there you go, voila. In our subtool menu over here, we have got our merged owl top high. And I just renamed that layer backpack high. So now we're ready to export as an FBX. And um, so we're going to go to C plugin, FBX. We're going to export visible, so just this. I'm going to turn it to bin, which is a slightly um, smaller file type. I'm going to leave it as layer or Maya Y up. Smooth normals is that S normals. TGA is a Targa file type. You could also change TGA to be um, JPEG or PNG or whatever kind of file you like, but Targa is a great one. And um, finally, if you want to look at your options, if you don't have too many polygroups, you can export your polygroups as materials. And what this means is when you're in Substance, every single polygroup is going to be broken out into its own texture set. This is great if you don't have very many materials. If you do, kind of like mine, have too many, I'm going to show you how to merge differently next. But let's just finish this part of the tutorial. So once I'm happy, I'm going to click export and be done. So if you only have a couple materials, move on to the next tutorial. If not, stay with me because I'm about to show you option two. So for option two, we're going to merge all of my layers onto two or three separate subtool layers. These new layers will have um, multiple objects on them, so I don't want their UVs to overlap at all. So I'm just going to unwrap these layers one more time. We'll use the existing UVs that we already created and literally just unwrap. And then finally, um, when I'm exporting, I'm going to turn off the option for export polygroups as separate materials. And that will create just three layers, three texture sets with all of my pieces on them. And it'll be much easier to handle in Substance Painter. So let's get started. 
Back in ZBrush, I am just going to merge some of these layers using the Merge Down option. I'm reordering some of the layers so that like all the metal parts are together. And then I'm going to click Merge Down to merge the layer down. Now, I did not have UVs turned on for that first Merge Down, so I lost some of those UVs, which is super annoying. So please make sure that doesn't happen to you. And it's a good idea to save um, before and after you do this, just because you may merge improperly. Um, but if you do that, you can always um, split and then try and merge again. And um, one more important thing is once I get these grouped into three layers, I'm going to need to unwrap one more time, keeping my existing UVs so that um, all of my UVs are packed into one UDEM per texture set. So I'll have three layers, each has their own UDEM, and they each have multiple textures on them. Okay, now I've finished merging these down into the three layers, and I'm ready to unflatten or unwrap these again. So before I do that, I just want you to look at um, what these layers actually look like with right now before we work on them. So I'm going to work on a clone of this layer. And um, if I flatten this, you'll see that I have overlapping UVs. So these trim pieces are overlapping the bag. So with use existing UV seams turned on, I can now unwrap this one more time and that will pack all of my UVs into a single UDEM space where nothing's overlapping. So see, these are nice and um, not overlapping. Perfect. And so I'm going to copy the UVs from this one, go back to my original layer and paste the UVs. Let's do the next layer. So same thing, I'm going to make sure to use it existing UV seams is on. I'm going to work on a clone. I'm going to unwrap this layer, flatten it to check, you can see nothing is overlapping, so that's great. I'm on that CL layer, remember how it creates the clone. Copy the UV layers, paste them, to my previous. Now we got one more to go. So exact same thing, work on a clone. I'm on that CL clone layer. I'm gonna well, I'll flatten it just to show you that right now everything's overlapping, so unflatten. Now I'm going to unwrap one more time with the use existing UV seams turned on. This is where I realized that I didn't have keep UVs turned on on one of my layers, so I have to go fix it. I'm going to fix that off, off camera. So once I fixed it, I just um, did the exact same process where I copied the UVs, pasted them onto the other layer, and now I have three layers all with good UVs. The pieces are not overlapping and um, we're set to export. So I will have three texture sets when I go to Substance. Okay, we're going back to that FBX export. Make sure that export polygroups as materials is turned off and then just hit export and save your FBX. The next video we will bring it into Substance and do the baking. All right, thank you.